multi chassis link aggregation or mc lag is probably the most popular host attachment type in today's data centers in this video i will show you how you can configure mc lag using the open source network operating system sonic software for open networking in the cloud As you know, port channel provide us link redundancy. MC lag is a special type of port channel which allows link aggregation between ports terminating on separate chassis, different chassis, in order to provide us device redundancy on top of the link redundancy that we get with normal port channel. There are two important components of MC lag. Peer link Peer link is a direct back to back layer 2 link between the two MC lag peers. We use peer link to carry ICCP traffic. ICCP stands for inter chassis control protocol. Name tells you everything. This is the protocol which is making this MC lag magic happen. Uh, ICCP is a protocol which is responsible for checking configuration consistency across the two uh, MC lag peers. It is also responsible to synchronize ARP and MAC address table between the two MC lag peers. Peer link may also carry some data plane traffic, specifically unicast traffic, which is destined to an orphan port. Peer keep alive link. Now, peer keep alive link is a layer three link, and it doesn't have to be a uh, back to back directly connected link between the two devices. In fact, in today's uh, clause topology in many cases we just use the link between leaf and spine to carry this peer keep alive link functionality peer keep live on peer keep live link we only have monitoring traffic there is no data plane traffic at all let's have a look at some of the configuration for mc lag mc lag system mac this is the mac which is used by the lacp process it has to be consistent. It has to be same on both MC lag peers. And in fact, because of this uh, same Mac, the outside world sees these MC lag peer devices as one virtual device because they are using the same system Mac. You can manually define MC lag system Mac. And if you do, make sure it is same on both the devices. If we don't manually define uh, MC lag system Mac, ICCP will automatically use Mac of the active MC lag peer on the standby MC lag peer as well. So ICCP will be responsible for this consistency. MC lag gateway Mac. This is the Mac which will be used by all the SVIs that we will configure across these MC lag peer switches. Once again, you can define it manually. If you do, make sure it is consistent on both sides. If you don't, if you don't, ICCP once again will use the Mac of the active MC lag peer on the standby as well. What else we need? So I've already talked about MC lag gateway Mac. MC lag domain. So you start by configuring MC lag domain and then you define in number. Uh, this number could be anything between one to 4,000. But remember, we can only have one MC lag domain on a switch. Source IP and peer IP, these are the IP addresses used by the peer keep alive link. In many cases, this will be the loopback uh, address. You'll see in the lab that I'm going to do in a few minutes, uh, we'll be using the loopback address for the um, source and destination of peer keep alive link. But in case you are using uh, a direct link for uh, peer keep alive link, like in my old Cisco days, I used to, we used to configure uh, VPC between Nexus 5K. So VPC is Cisco's implementation of MC lag. Um, on Nexus 5K, we used to connect management interface uh, back to back for peer keep alive link. And in that case, if you're using a direct link, then the interface IP will be used here because that is your peer keep alive link IP addresses. It could be your SVI IP address as well. So whatever uh, link that you are using for peer keep alive link functionality, that IP address you need to define here source IP and peer IP. And here you define your peer link. Uh, 
as you can see, your peer link could be port channel or it could be a, a single physical interface, Ethernet, whatever. That's also allowed. An MC LEC system Mac, as I mentioned, this is optional configuration that you can do. So this is all the configuration in the global configuration mode that you do. Uh, after this configuration, your MC lag relationship between the two peer switches should come up. But how do you make a port channel an MC lag? Let's look at that configuration, the interface configuration. So for example, in this case, we want to create this port channel one between the server and these two uh, MC lag peer switches. This is the configuration we need on, on each switch. So for example, we are using Ethernet 0 here. We go in the interface Ethernet 0 mode and we issue the command channel group. Uh, in this case, we are making channel group 1. So this channel group 1. Uh, remember, you can only configure a dynamic port channel as MC lag, not static. So that's the configuration you need on the interface mode. Now you go in the interface port channel mode. And here you may have other configuration like your trunking configuration, VLAN configuration. But the only configuration you need for MC lag is this MC lag and the domain number. And that's it. That's all the configuration you need to enable MC lag on your Sonic switches. Okay. So this is the topology that we are going to use in our lab. So as you can see, we are leveraging GNS3 in this lab and we are running Enterprise Sonic version 3.1.1. Uh, this is the large topology with five switches, but we are going to focus on Leaf 1 and Leaf 2. I'm going to leverage same topology in my next video where I will show you how to configure VXLAN eVPN with logical VTAP. But in this video, we will focus on Leaf 1, Leaf 2 and we will focus on MC lag configuration. Just to let you know that I have already configured OSPF on all of these five switches. If you want to understand how OSPF can be configured on Enterprise Sonic, I have recorded a video uh, on, on this particular topic and here is a link for this video if you want to understand OSPF configuration. Let's focus on our MC lag configuration. So we'll start from leaf one. If I do show MC lag brief, sorry, MC show MC lag brief on leaf one, it is not configured. Show MC lag brief on leaf two, not configured. Okay, OSPF is already configured, so you can see that if I do show IP route on leaf one. I am already learning this loopback address from leaf 2. 192.168.0.2. And how am I learning it? Through two paths, Ethernet 12 and 16, which is spine 1 and spine 2. Let me move it a little bit. So spine 1 and spine 2. I'm learning leaf 1 is learning loopback of leaf 2 through these two paths. Similarly, leaf 2 will have a root back to uh, leaf 1 through spine 1 and spine 2. Let's have a look. So IP route and we can see leaf 2 has is learning 192.168.0.1 once again through the uplinks to the spine Ethernet 12 and 16. Okay, so let's start configuration of MC lag. We have a sample configuration here. We have already discussed this configuration. Copy and paste. There we go. It is all accepted. Show MC lag brief. And we can see that on leaf one, we can see that domain ID we configured as one. Row is active, but session status is down. Why down? Because we have not done any MC lag configuration on the leaf 2 side. Let's do that. Leaf 2 configuration is going to be very similar. The only difference is, only difference will be the source and destination IP for peer keep alive link. So leaf 2 has an IP of 2 and peer will be leaf 1. Copy and put it on leaf 2. Looks good. Let's see if the MC lag session is now up. 
and it is up. So Duane is once again one, has to match on both sides and session status is up. The rule of leave two is standby. But there is no M lag configured so far. We have not configured any um, port channels, any MC lag coming from the uh, endpoints. This is what we are going to do now. So this endpoint one will form this port channel one MC lag with leaf one and leaf two. Start with leaf one. So this is this is going to be identical configuration on both sides. I'm just going to copy paste here. So copy cross to leaf one. Looks good. Show port channel summary. So as you can imagine, show port channel summary command is not specific to only MC lag. It is applicable to your standard port channels as well. Show port channel summary and MC lag is also a port channel. So we can see port channel one is up with Ethan and zero. So it is P means port channel. It is up. Looks good. Uh, port channel 100 is our this uh, peer link which I which I had I had already configured. <clears throat> if I do show MC lag brief because port channel one is an MC lag, we can see on the local side it is up, but on the remote side it is down because we have not configured leaf two. Let's do that now. Same configuration, very simple configuration mode and apply the configuration show port channel summary we can see port channel one is up and show mc lag brief it is up yes this is good so endpoint one can use either leaf one or leaf two to send its traffic the way we're going to validate this is we will send some traffic between endpoint one and endpoint two then we will shut down one of the either leaf one or leaf two and we will see that the traffic will switch to the other side. But let's see which at this point I cannot tell you endpoint whether endpoint one will be using leaf one or leaf two to send this traffic. So let's find out. So here we um, here we have endpoint two. On endpoint two IP is 11.1.1.2 and from endpoint two I will be I will be pinging 10.1.1.1 and I can and I can ping yeah you can see this duplicate packet this is common when you have uh, this MC lag configured okay so endpoint 2 is pinging endpoint 1 I don't know which of these two links is being used so let me look at this link so I'll do this Wireshark packet capture. Bring it here. Okay, so you can see that we are only seeing this eco reply, which tells me that this eco request from endpoint two to endpoint one is coming through this link from 11.1 .1 to 10.1, .1, and the reply is going through this link like this. Okay, let me actually show you that as well. And then we will uh, shut down one of these. So this is the, this is the link between leaf two and endpoint one, <clears throat> this one. And we can see the eco request is coming from here, 11.1.1.2 to 10.1.1.1. Okay. The request is coming through this way, going out this way. What I'll do is I'll shut down this uh, this link, which will essentially mean that from endpoint one's point of view, leaf two is lost. See then how this traffic is uh, recovered. So this is what I expect is once I shut down this link, I don't I won't see any traffic flowing here, and on this link actually. I will see bidirectional traffic from 10.1 to 11.1 and 11.1 to 10.1, both. Where is my, okay, so this is the endpoint to pinging. So we'll keep an eye on this window just to see that we don't, we don't drop any packet. 
<clears throat> and I'll go to leaf two. This is my leaf two. Um, and I will shut down this link, Ethernet zero. Leaf two configuration mode. <clears throat> interface Ethernet zero. So before I shut down once again, <clears throat> we expect that all traffic on this link, leave two to leave one. This is leave two to leave one. This will stop, and here the traffic will be doubled. <clears throat> and I'm expecting minimum to no traffic loss here. Let's find out. Shut down. So this traffic is stopped, <clears throat> and as you can see, this traffic is doubled. So both bidirectional traffic is now flowing between leave one and endpoint one. And we did not see any packet loss. Control C, zero packet loss. So you can see that <clears throat> with MC lag, once it is configured, then we have link redundancy as well as uh, device redundancy. So this is MC lag configuration for you on Enterprise Sonic. As always, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section. In the next video, we will leverage the same topology and we will configure VXLAN EVPN tunnels over it. Until then, goodbye.